I thought I'd be more shaken after injuring someone, but oddly enough, I'm not that shook. I'm calm enough to walk and think about how long it'll take for me to go to Pacifica's, and if word of this incident will spread. Crunch. 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 Oh, right. The new ghost should be here by now. Crunch. Crunch. I'm sure Anya's gonna talk about me in an exaggerated way, and Pacifica will rebuke her for it. Crunch. Crunch. And that's when I come in, calling Anya names like Poopy Doo Doo Head and Pacifica will agree with me. I wonder if the new girl will laugh. I bet she will. Crunch. I can't wait to see them all. Wee wee wee. A siren, coming from behind. No way, I think to myself. Only for police car to pull over behind me. Oh, for crying out loud. The audio feedback of a megaphone screeches. This is the police! You, stop right there and turn around. Slowly. <sighs> megaphones give all... Megaphones always give voices a particular grating sound. Gee, officer, I didn't know there was a speed limit for pedestrians. If only I could throw out a lighthearted joke like that. I hesitate for a few seconds before turning around. And as a meaningless token of defiance, I turn around at a normal pace instead of slowly. As a coward, that's about as much resistance as I can muster. But that's enough resistance for the man to pull out his gun as soon as he comes within eyesight of me. He's even making sure to partially hide behind the cover of his car door. Look, I don't have a gun or anything, okay? Though I guess I can't help it since I'm an ex-convict. I understand, but that doesn't make it any better. Okay, boys, if it's your first job in 9,999 years, so get ready. The location's at... He's probably calling for reinforcements on the police radio. I wish he'd cut it out, but unfortunately all I can do is watch. Over. The suspect is... The ninja. Again with the ninja talk. Why do they think I'm a ninja? Um, I'm not a nin... Uh, just turn yourself in, please. We don't want to have to do anything either, you know? Just, just want to talk. I'm pretty sure talking counts as anything. I almost forgot about it, but that's how cops are. They have this annoying way of acting all buddy-buddy. It's annoying, yeah, but in a way that brings me back. Brings me back to terrible times, that is. I didn't do anything wrong. But there is a report, you know? You assaulted an elderly man, didn't you? I didn't do anything, and I've got somewhere I need to go, so if you'll please excuse me. Okay, so how do you explain the elderly man slumped out over there? Uh, self-defense? Everyone guilty of excessive force claims self-defense, you know. But... This is a no-but situation. But... Wait, hold on. But this is a no, this is a no-but situation, situation, kind of, but. This waste of time sluggishly drags on. Sir! Here comes the police. Where is she? Rushing in from the back alleys. Where's the ninja? Three uniformed officers file into formation. Ah, oh, took you boys long enough. From the three different paths at the same time. Now then, you mind taking a little trip with us to the station? When their superior gives the word, the officers casually disperse. They block access to the back alleys, trying to prevent me from escaping. Surrounding me. As if I'm a criminal. Or perhaps a criminal ninja, to be specific. Two of them seem like they're just itching to go. The welcome party must have started already. Maybe they're sad I'm not there. Maybe they're mad. But it's not my fault. When I think about it like that, I start to feel the irritation boiling up from the pit of my stomach, mixed in with some other emotions. I want to run away from here. Sorry, but I've got to go. I repeat myself. When I take a step forward, one of the officers takes out his gun, as if by reflex. Fast, precise movements, almost like clockwork. It seems to set off a chain reaction as the other two officers also draw their guns. I don't have time for this so I can't stop now. One officer stands in my way, pointing his gun at me. But I still don't stop. I I'll shoot, I mean it. You'll shoot and... 
I ask that question, and then take another step forward. He shoots his gun. It doesn't hit me. Dodging gunfire isn't hard as long as you pay attention to the trigger finger and the way the muzzle is pointing. And someone once said, You can't dodge a bullet, but you can dodge a gun. At least I think some. At least I think someone said that. Is it true though? I get the feeling that didn't really happen. In any case, I snatch the officer's gun and kick him in the gut, knocking him out. Underneath his thick clothes and thin flesh, I can feel his bones break through the tip of my shoes. A ninja. You think I'm a ninja, huh? Then you better not complain when I act all ninja-like. You want me to be a ninja so bad? Then fine. I'll be your ninja. You got a problem with that? After a moment's delay, the guns start firing one after another. I leap. Since the officers have their sights narrowed to aim, for just a second it'll probably look like I teleported to them. But a second is all I need. Before they can find where the ninja vanished to, I swoop down and slam my foot into another officer's head, knocking them out. I follow up by training my sights- oof. I follow up by training my sights on the third officer midair and shoot out both his kneecaps. <laughs> Unable to stop the momentum of the bullets, his bones and flesh tear open like a pair of red roses. Only the police chief remains. He seems to be preparing something behind- He seems to be preparing something behind the cover of the police car door. Is that the awkward pump action of a shotgun, I hear? My suspicions are confirmed when I see him awkwardly point a muzzle through the tinted glass. But I don't stop. I hold up one of the felled officers as a human shield as I advance. Do you dare shoot your ally as he still breathes? He dares. <laughs> he dares. I admire your guts, Chief. The police car window shatters. The glass shards twinkle as they dance through the air. But you forget that I can leap. Now you have nothing to show for your guts, and his ally's guts are showing for nothing. As I dodge the widespread of shotgun pellets, I look down at the astonished face of the chief. I brace the lower half of my body for the landing. Why do you look so surprised? This is what ninjas do, isn't it? It's your own fault. I know I've always wanted to dream, but this is pretty much a nightmare. Before I realize it, I hear the noise in my ears again. My nerves are right on the edge. The soles of my shoes touch the ground. Thankfully, I don't slip on the snow. This is your own fault. Way before he can finish pumping his semi-auto shotgun again, I've got my gun pushed right up against the chief's temple. Please put that thing down. Yes, ma'am. The chief lets go of his shotgun. He also relinquishes his pistol without me even having to ask. What a reasonable guy. I kick the guns away. It wasn't my fault. Yeah, I believe you, really, but the priest... <sighs> priest? As At first, I'm caught off guard to hear that name, but it makes sense when you realize that the priest has the police in the palm of his hand. He told us to protect the town if the ninja ever got violent. Is the priest the one who labeled me a ninja? Uh, yeah, maybe, I guess. I lower the gun. I put it in my pocket. I dust off my hands. Tell the priest he can go to hell. Huh? That makes twice today I've sent a guy flying through the air. Sand Dollar! The police investigator yells the name of an obscure marine organism before falling unconscious. He's heavier than the elderly man, but I still pull it off. Guess that's one more reason to hate the church. I toss the officer's guns into the trash and start heading towards Pacifica's once again. There's nothing odd in particular about the rest of my journey. And I'm not just saying that because of how bizarre the journey has been so far. I just mean I keep walking, make progress, and I eventually reach my destination. Pacifica's house is a little bit away from the center of town, but none of that really matters now that I'm here. It's a splendid house that even I can appreciate. It's different in every way from my apartment. It's spacious, warm, and stand-alone. You'd expect a rich, friendly family to live here. And yet Pacifica lives here by herself. But then again, so does every other ghost in town, without exception. There's a weather-beaten sofa sitting out in front of the house. 
a ghost man sitting on it. He looks away as if I'm an eyesore. I don't remember this sofa, but maybe it just slipped my mind. It strikes me as strange that it's sitting outside all exposed to the elements. Then again, this whole town is weird as its core, so strange is nothing out of the ordinary. Now that I think about it, I remember this being the sofa Pacifica picked up from the garbage dump when we did garbage collection yesterday. I'm half relieved that I remembered, and half sad that I forgot. The positive and the negative cancel one out to zero inside my heart. I ignore the man and head to the door. After just a second of hesitation, I ring the bell. For an expensive looking house, the doorbell sounds surprisingly cheap. After a moment of silence, the door opens abruptly. The thick panel of wood is almost perfectly soundproof, preventing me from hearing anything that might be going on inside. Yo. Contrary to my expectations, it's Anya who shows up, rather than Pacifica. Oh, uh, hello. I feel like I've stumbled at the first step. I panic a little, but just a little, so I'm able to act natural. Nice weather we're having. It's night. And snowing. Ah. I stumble, stagger, and fall flat onto my face. Metaphorically speaking, not physically. That's just what it feels like. It kind of hurts. Well, whatever. Come in. We've got coffee, black tea, and some weird herbal tea or whatever. What would you like? Anya heads back inside, beckoning me in. I follow and shut the bulky door behind me. The various sounds of the street suddenly fade into the distance, even sounds I didn't realize were there until they're gone. I went with coffee, one sugar. Why are all the drinks at this girl's house so good? They must be expensive. So bogey. Saying that, Anya leads me through the hallway towards the living room. There's a nostalgic smell, the smell of town's ghosts, a sweet, heavy smell reminiscent of a honey-scented candle. Since they disappear in the sun, sometimes it feels like the only real thing about them is their smell. When I enter the living room, the smell gets even stronger. The room's decorated colorfully and cheerfully for the welcome party. There's a fireplace, but it's just for show. The room is actually heated by a large, noisy heater. Uh, um... I hesitate before addressing Anya. Oh, do you just want hot water? Sometimes you just want to drink plain hot water to feel something, huh? No, not that. Anya can be kind of dense sometimes. Not that there's anything wrong with that, it's just how she is. You gotta... you just gotta be direct with her. Where's Pacifica? Oh, she went to pick up the new girl. Oh, I guess I jumped the gun then. I thought Pacifica had already started the welcome party. Am I late? Well, you are pretty late, but I think Pacifica's facing some issues on her end, too. I'm a little worried that it's my fault, since my violent rampage could have caused delays elsewhere in town. <laughs> Speaking of my violent rampage, I wonder if Anya will hear about it soon. Pacifica's got ears everywhere, so she might have heard about it already. I feel dejected. I don't want to think about the subject. So let's switch gears. Oh, shoot. About how late am I? Relatively. Meaning? Look, if we had an accurate sense of time, we wouldn't just say things like 9,999 years. I slip up again. But I guess the positives and negatives cancel out to zero again. Because now I know for sure that the elderly man's idea of three o'clock is nowhere to be found. I suppose you're right. Here. Anya hands me a mug. The coffee inside it is so pitch black that it almost looks like tar. You're not gonna say you won't... You're not gonna say you don't want any, right? You used to drink this a lot, after all. Thank you. I drink it down. It seems sweeter than what I drank yesterday. Is it good? Probably. What's that supposed to mean? Anyway, here. Anya hands me a tin can the size of a matchbox. Thank you. Looks like they're mint-flavored tablets, which I don't think is a good match for coffee, so I put them in my pocket. Hmm. 
Anya sits back in the sofa, looking pensive, but not angry. At least that's what it looks like to me. She's got a mug in hand, just like me. She stares at the surface of the black liquid. I stand at the entrance of the room, watching her. I forgot to ask her where to hang my coat. Say. Anya looks up. I start to worry that I've been staring too much at her. Yes? Sorry, if we're bothering you... Bothering me about what? That's what I should have asked, but I'm a little too late. Anya starts talking again before I say anything. If we're not bothering you, then that's fine, but I don't want to be a bother. It's just a lose-lose situation all around. Anya talks to me in intermittent bursts. So it takes me a moment to figure out what she's talking about. Are you talking about calling me over here? If it's a bother, then I'm sorry. You don't look like you're enjoying yourself too much, and you look like you hate it when I talk. I just want you to believe me when I say there's no hard feelings or anything. I feel a little hopeless. Though I don't know if hopelessness is something you can just feel a little of. It feels like just a teensy, tiny part of your heart has been crushed. Overall, you might not be that hurt, but you feel hopeless in that small aspect. It's not like I hate being here with you. I say that loud and clear, I swear it. I suppose the obvious explanation here is that I'm lacking in sociability. I should have smiled more, I should have come here sooner. Anya doesn't know about that scuffle I had outside, so she thinks I just dragged my feet to get here. I don't hate it at all. Anya looks at me. Now it's my turn to look down at my mug. Except I already drank up most of mine. So I've got no choice but to look back up. Well, okay, but... Anya looks at me again, with sad eyes. Eyes that make me sad, too. Though not as sad as her. But I wanted to do it. Anya murmurs. We decided that this is what we should do, even if you hated us for it. What you should do? We wanted to make a new friend for you. It's the least we could have done. After all, it's almost like we'd stolen ourselves from you, I guess. I get what she's trying to say. It's almost painfully obvious to me. We want you to have friends. Even if you hate us, we could at least get the new girl to be your friend, couldn't we? But that part I just can't understand. I'm sorry. I really am. I'm sorry if we're being too noisy, but still. You've got it all wrong. For a moment, I thought I could hold myself back, but I realized I just can't. I shout. This is all just a big misunderstanding. Yes, this is a misunderstanding indeed. One huge misunderstanding. I hear a voice from behind. Pacifica's standing there, with snow still clinging to her body. 